Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of I Think I'm Human 2. We're here with Caitlin. I'm Hi. so excited. Caitlin and I have been in so many rooms, and I reached out to her, and I was like, I would love to get together with you. I've watched you for so long. Um, I said that right away. I was like, I literally have watched you for so long. Thank and you followed like through a lot of stuff you've been through so I feel like you're a perfect guest to be on so I'm excited thank you so much for having me yeah I'm excited I can't believe we've been in so many rooms together and yeah. we're finally aligning I know if I feel like that's happening kind of a lot with a different like because I've never really come out to New York in the right. last few times I've been in rooms with like a lot of people where I'm like oh my god and I'm still like I'm in that mindset like you've done this so much longer yeah. but I'm in that mindset still where I feel like I'm small creator and I'm like oh my god I followed you for so long I feel like it's weird to say that but then other times yeah. When people say it to me, I'm like, it's, I love it. So yeah, like, I don't know why I'm thing. still uncomfortable doing it, but I feel that, know. but no, or I if agree. they're like, who are you? <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, are you a great? I'm like, yeah, I am. It's okay. I swear. It's fine. It's nah, fine. I think that's what makes you special. I feel yeah. like sometimes like when you walk in a room, like everybody kind of knows everybody, but like there's so many, so much ego involved and yeah. you know, it's nice that you go up to people and say like, Hey, I yeah. actually value what you do. Yeah. So because it's, it, it's hard doing what we do, it is especially being hard. so vulnerable online and like, you, especially yourself, like you're very open and honest. And some mm -hmm. people are just like, they don't talk about certain things. And so you just get a certain side of them. But I'm like, I'm always like, I feel like I know you. I'm like, yeah. hey, come on over. Come hang Literally, out. Like, no, I love it. Come on up. What do you want for coffee? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. It makes it so much more fun. Yeah. I'm excited to have you. So I always start with like, who are you? If someone's listening and they don't know who you are, give a little synopsis. And she had a little bit of a story to share too of like how you got here. So I think that'd be a fun one to share. Okay. <laughs> My name is Caitlin Reagan. I have been doing social media since I am 15 years old. That's I crazy. started... I know. Crazy. And I'm now 26 for context. So this has been going on for quite some time. Um, I started off because when I was younger, I was Justin Bieber's One Less Lonely Girl. He called me up on stage. Well, technically, his managers came and found me in the audience. I got lucky. I like to say that he called me up on stage to make it sound more personable, but it wasn't that deep. And uh, <laughs> it wasn't that deep. It wasn't that deep. And I went on stage and then he like posted on Twitter that I was his one less lonely girl of New York. And from there, I gained this following. And that's kind of where I, it all started. I yeah. then um, had this following and I was like, this is really cool. You know, Instagram was so new. We didn't yeah. know what this was or what was really to come from it. But what I did understand is that like you could connect with people that you really wouldn't be able to connect with without this. So there's something to it. And I went away to college. Um, people, I guess, just kind of watched me grow up on Instagram. Um, and then I went on a reality show. Oh, my <laughs> God. What? There's so Which much one? different chapters. Paradise Hotel. It was on Never Fox. Never heard of it. In 2019. It's kind of like Love Island, like okay. the same concept. And then when I came back, um, I got back together with my, past, my late boyfriend. I always get so confused on how to properly like Explain say like it. my late boyfriend yeah it's like it's not my ex-boyfriend you know it's yeah so interesting but um I got back with him we started making TikToks when TikTok came about and then everything kind of just exploded yeah so craziness a whole long journey I feel like that was years. so much in one shot 11 years yeah. that's a long time and you've grown up with it too that's probably so hard it kind of is honestly Heck like yeah. I I think that like I'm realizing now that I'm older I'm like whoa like I've spent so much time documenting my life. It's like in my norm. And I just came to realize, especially after the loss that like I've experienced that when I took time off of social media, I was like, this is what life is without social media. Because you took a year off after you passed, right? Yeah. How did that go? Like going from being on all day, every day to being it was, off. I, I thought that it was going to be so hard, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Really? Yeah. And honestly... Sometimes I wish that I was still there because okay. like social media can be really draining and it was nice yeah. to like finally live for myself because I think that without realizing sometimes when we're like going to do something like you think I need to post it and yeah sometimes you take a step back and you're like am I doing this for me or the There's world sometimes I even like I'm like oh I gotta wear something I can link because people always ask, you know yes exactly a great example yeah even today like you know I would have loved to came in sweatpants but I'm like oh well I should probably take some pictures while right. I'm there and it's like it's a whole song and dance that sometimes. That is so wild. I, sorry, I have something in my eye. It no, hurts. Okay. Um, I keep saying to creators, though, every single time I meet somebody and they have a wild story of how they got here, I always say there is a reason, though. You know I what agree. I mean? Like, you are supposed to be here, and who would have thought that, like, 
stalking Justin Bieber would have been the reason that you're here, but I there's know. a reason. You know, it's crazy too, because when I was really, really young and like YouTube was around before even Instagram, I came across this video and like at the time when you're young, like your parents put on like, I don't know, like kids, like cartoons. Yeah. But I came across this video and I always forget the name of this man, which is so annoying because he changed my life. But I watched this. You might have even seen it. This video of like this guy giving like a speech at a middle school talking about like the loss of his mom and like okay. how like he would always want to be with his friends and he never gave his, his mom time. And then she passed away suddenly and like it changed his life. And I was watching this video. I'm like, why? This makes me feel so like good like in a way like it makes me feel he really is changing my life right now like I want to do this like I want to be able to go talk on stage and like change the way people see the world for the better yeah and like it's just kind of crazy because like I ended up finding that that purpose yeah you know so that's it. what I love I spoke about what I hate about social media but I do love being able to connect with so many people and live out my purpose yeah I was just talking to Abby Buffo about this before of like, when you hear the term influencer, it's like, what are you influencing people with? And all my favorite people are like, it, who cares about the PR? Like that's the bonus to it. That's amazing. And the events are great. And like networking is amazing, but it's like really getting to touch people. And like, yeah. when you meet them, you're like, when they come up to you and you're like, you really changed my life. I'm sitting here like just me, being, like, yeah. but okay, I'm doing the right thing. Like right. I'm posting the right stuff. I'm saying the right things. Yeah. Like I got to keep going. I cannot believe it's been that long for you though. I know. How long has it been for you? I've always posted, okay. but I was never like when Snapchat was a thing. I say this all the time. Like I shared my entire life to the point where people were annoyed. Like my brothers were like, stop posting on TikTok, like just tapping through my gotcha. stories or on Snapchat. Um, 2020, I was laid off from my job and when the COVID happened and I just part started like posting TikToks for fun, like no big deal. And that's kind of where it started. And then mm. I started posting with my dad and those did very well those were going nuts then were they like prank videos or like what kind of no, videos no my dad and i just have like a weird humor like okay. we're just stupid like love and not in like a like we're idiots but like we just don't care what people think we would make like silly little jokes and like i've never been the person like if you watch any of my stuff like there's a video where i'm in full glam and there's a video where i'm like Chill. straight out of the shower yeah. so i've love. never cared Never cared what people thought. We were just always joking around. And my dad has this like mock. Um, he, But he also had a list. But that's actually really what started it all, which is kind of funny. My dad had a list, but he would mock people. Hmm. And I never realized that all of us would mimic him. Yeah. And I would use the mock with the lisp. And it became like this I love thing. This. And people were like, do the voice, do the voice. And I'm like, what voice are you talking about? And I didn't realize like how often Whoa. all of us were using that mocking voice. Wow. And, um, that's because like I came known for that for a little bit. I was like, okay, that's kind of weird, but whatever. And then, yeah, now I just do complete lifestyle. My husband just really the last Amazing. since 2020, it's so almost four years. I went full time right after my dad passed. So just over a year ago, I went full time. Um, cause I just couldn't go back to work. It was just too, have you ever had a job like a, like a <laughs> yeah. corporate, had, like a real job? Honestly, no, not even that. Like, I feel like any job is a real job. But have you true. had like a corporate nine to five? I never had a corporate nine to five. Okay. But when I was in college, I was like a bartender okay. and a waitress at Buffalo Wild Wings. That's a real job. Right? Come on. You pay was, real taxes. You that. make real money. Right. And it's real hard work. So <laughs> Exactly. So I was doing um, that. But by okay. the time when I stepped out of college, I went right on the show. And okay. then like it really like changed my life. Did you enjoy the show? Would you do it such again a, in your lifetime? Such an interesting um, experience. I would do it again, okay. but I'm not like I need to do it again. I actually feel like, did you do a story time about this? Um, I've spoken about it before, but I don't never like specifically about this only. No, I, f I feel like I remember hearing something when you brought that up. I was like, I don't remember the show necessarily, but I remember you saying you got back with him after something. So I'm assuming that's probably what it was. Yeah, that's okay. true. Yeah. How long were you guys together? So we were on and off for 10 years. Okay. Um, an interesting it's so I never know like I feel like this is such like a controversial idea it's like if you're on and off with somebody are you still technically with them for 10 years okay you know what do you think yeah it's like a, I say yeah right? I guess it would depend on like the if like it's off for like two and a half years right and you like never spoke to each other never saw each other I would say maybe not like yeah. I would be like oh yeah we were together six years right 
in a 10 year span, but I would say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to confidently say we were <laughs> together for 10 years um, okay. on and off. But I think that the offs is like what made the relationship so beautiful because during that time, like you really number one, learn like, why do I keep thinking about this person? Yeah. That's, you know, you realize how much like you actually value them in your life. And number two, you just learn so much what mm -hmm. you like, what you don't like trying to go on a date with somebody else and like, eh, yeah, you know, you guys are also so young, so young. That's the other thing. When people say like, for example, my husband and I got married after two years together, but two years in your mid twenties different versus 10 yep. years in high school. Yes, so now it's totally like, well, no doubt you had 10 years. Yep. Like some people are like, Oh, like they should have a ring on it by now. It's like they're 25. Like, right. Yeah, 10 years is 10 years, but they're 25. Like, right. are you kidding? So true. That's a long time, though. It was a long time. And it was it was really cool because, like, we just pretty much, like, from 15 to 25, that's, like, so much time to learn about who you are mm -hmm. and to evolve together during times where he was evolving, evolving in one direction. I was going this way and, like, trying to now figure that out. Go and together. It was just such, like, an interesting roller coaster. Yeah. And, and no matter what happened, no matter how far we felt we were from each other, we always found a way back. Yeah. You guys felt online genuinely like friends too. Like the connection was a real bond there of like a friendship. Yeah. Which is what I have with my husband. So mm -hmm. I, and sometimes people think like, I've heard the quote of like, you become roommates or like friends. And it's like, no, I love that where it's like, absolutely, we can just be completely off. And it's like, at the end of the day, it almost feels like he's my best friend. I right. don't have to be. I think that's the most beautiful thing about like a significant other. They're mm -hmm. like everything, mm -hmm. like your best friend, like your therapist sometimes. Yeah. Um, they're really, really like your significant yeah. other, yeah. you know? So like when they, when the phrase of like, they're my home, like it's like, they're the four walls, yep. they're the foundation, yep. they're the roof. They literally do all of it. All of it. It's, yeah. I'm sad that you had to experience that though, losing him. Me too. Do you feel as if like that relationship would have been a forever thing? You know, you the thing that? that sucks about him not being here anymore is I really wish I would know that for sure, yeah. you know, because that was like the fun part, like trying to figure out like because yeah. we were not perfect. Like we would argue and always Everybody try does. to figure it out. I do think, though, based off of like how many times that we've fell apart and came back together and like really genuinely cared about like trying to figure out how can we make this work? I would say that we probably would have made it to the finish line I of a marriage. That. I so, love that. Because it just, all it really takes is like two people that like actually care. And choosing each other every day. Yeah. And clearly you guys kept choosing each other. Literally. You're like, damn, okay, here we go. To the point I'm like, I'm done choosing you. He's like, I'm done choosing you. And then the next day like, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hello. Remember me? Yeah, exactly. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Funny though. You know. How did that, how did that look? And especially like, so the same age, when did he pass? How old were you? We were 24. Okay. Wow. So we were both at the same age around grief, but like you had a totally different grief yeah. that I can't even relate to nor imagine. So I always want to say that, like, I'm like, no grief is the same, no, no. matter, even if someone else, like even my brother and I, like losing the same person, it's Absolutely. still a different you're grief. Right. Yep. And you're very open about talking about your grief, but there's so many people out there who have lost a spouse or a significant other. And like, that's hard. Mm -hmm. How did you do that at such a young age? Like, what was your mindset right away? Well, the thing that was very interesting about my experience because he passed to cancer was that this was something that I watched slowly unravel. So before okay. like he actually left, like there was so much time to like sit down together and comprehend that he was leaving before he left. So like for you, it was very sudden yeah. and you didn't have time to sit with your father and be like, hey, like, you know, what, what do I want to tell you maybe? Or like, that's the thing. Like it's, it's always such a debate of like, what's like a preferred way, like a sudden or like a slow, painful death. Yeah, they both have coming. their pros yeah. and cons. Let's yeah. be real. And they both suck. Like neither of them are fun. So who cares? Exactly. But what one of the pros of like this being something that was like a very slow process is that like there was so much time to really sit down and like just tell each other everything that we've ever wanted each other to know. Mm. And I think that like when two people come together after fighting for so long and say like, I surrender you are able to accept once he's gone that he's gone, you know? And I think that's what really helped that I've had so much time with him to accept it. So like, it feels better when you accept it with the person that's gone when they're gone. How long was he going through it? He had the cancer since he was 18, but it was always a very livable cancer. It's, it was testicular cancer. And they always say that it's, 
the most survivable survivable there's like a very high survival rate okay um but his specific testicular cancer just was like such a pain in the ass um it would always just come back if it came back it was like very subtle but the last time that it came back it came back very aggressively in his main organs like his liver and lungs and that was uh i would say that was about like 10 months of that going on so when I think of like how long he's had the cancer, it was like five years. But when I think of like how long he lived like a cancer patient and we lived as like a cancer like couple yeah. and went through this was like a year. If someone was in the same shoes, so there's a spouse out there and mm-hmm. going through that, what is a way, one, that you got through it by a side, knowing that this is all happening? And then two, what is something that you would tell somebody for them? Like, what did he need? So I know that's a two parter, but like, mm-hmm. what did you need during that time to show up? What I really needed was time to myself. Like, I would love to try my hardest to, like, find that hour in a day Mm -hmm. to, like, either do my skincare or, like, lay down in my own bed and just, like, digest because there's so much going on and it feels like your life is so fast-paced. And when that's happening, you can't comprehend what's going on right in front of you. Yeah. So my major goal was like, how can I find time to like understand what's happening? You know, so for me, that's what I really needed time to myself. For him, what he really needed was a friend, somebody that was like his ride or die that wouldn't always treat him like he was sick. Yeah. So he can feel like a normal 24 year old again. Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah. Going back to the, the debate between what's better or worse. Both are horrible. I, I would rather the, the quick. Hmm. I would hearing people's stories. Cause I've heard a lot. Mm. Everyone shares their stories. I don't know what it would have been like to know they're going and just like, granted, do I wish? Cause there's so many times where I feel like I didn't even process. Mm. And especially cause he was in so many of my videos that like I watch back and to me, TikTok's still like my life. Right? right. So like when I watch those videos, he's still alive out there and I just haven't talked to him. Yeah. Like that's my mindset. Absolutely. And the way that it happened so fast, that's like the one downside or the, the other part, the two part to that one is like, I have questions, obviously of like course. that you wanted to ask your parent or whomever, but I could not imagine watching it day in and day out and then having to stay strong through it too when it's like you're crumbling inside yeah no well I think like the worst too is like there's so much time to be like in denial Mm -hmm. like my mom like really helps like because I've asked so many questions like to like people that were close to me during that time like how was I functioning Mm -hmm. you know and my mom was like you really did not understand I don't think as much as like you think you did yeah that he was really going to be gone while he was still here it's just you to, to live in a world where, like, you know 100% somebody's going to pass is, like, so miserable. So there's, like, 10% of you that's, like, there's a chance. And I think that, like, my brain really focused on that 10%. Yes. Because, like, it's the only way. Yeah. It feels like, you yeah. know. But um, I would tap in and out of – there's just a lot of time for being in denial. No, I, yeah. I agree. I remember the morning that it had happened, we had had a – when the ambulance got there and they were reviving him, we got a gasp. And we hadn't had a gasp, right? So I was like, he's coming back. Like, he's good. He's good. And in that, I remember going downstairs to my cousin who had lost his mom. And I went downstairs because the ambulance can't tell you. Like, they've passed. They have to get pronounced dead at the hospital. And I remember just looking at my cousin. I was like, he's alive, isn't he? Like, we're going to get there and he's going to be alive. Mm -hmm. Because we had to go meet him at the hospital. And he was like, Kat, I need you to prepare yourself. And I was like, he's gone. And he Mm -hmm. was like. But I remember sitting in that moment of like delusion. I'm right. like, no, he's hundred percent alive. Like this is all a joke. I remember when the doctor came in and told us my first words were like, you're fucking with me. That was mm. literally exactly what I said. I was like, you're fucking with us. And she just like stared at me and was like, because I feel like you do have that little piece of inkling of, of like they're a fighter, like they're going to make it through or God's got us. Like he's yeah. got us every other day. Like why today did he right. not have us, you know? Right. Do you feel like there's so many things in your life that have happened since that are him? I know you've shared a little bit online, but I want you to talk a little bit about that here because I love it. I love watching I know, those right? stories. The signs, they're always the best. Um, Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm going to be honest. I definitely am annoyed. I wanted more. All 100%. Right? I, I'm like, what's going on? Why are things not flying in my house? I want books flying. I want lights flickering. <laughs> 
Um, you said you were going to be a little more loud than what you've been, but you know what? We don't know the rules on the other side, but, um, there's just, he's always, I feel like I've, I always get a sign when I really, really need it. Yeah. Um, there's just so many different examples of signs. Uh, one that comes to mind right now is we were cooking me and his best friend soup and we used, um, alphabet letters as like the pastas in the broth. Yeah. And we finished our soup. We like dumped it all in the sink and I was like, okay, I need to go do the dishes. And I look in the pot and there's two letters on the bottom that were left and it was FL and his name was Francesco Lopresti. Yeah. And like, I just, it's like little things. It's like, yeah. what are the chances that yeah. like, those are the only two like pasta letters left on, yeah. on the bottom of the pot you know, it's right just like next him to each other, hi. right yeah. next to each other. I have the picture. So many different little things. There was another time where um, <laughs> I was driving and I was so mad because I found out it was so stupid. I found out that he went to the strip club when I didn't know. And it's like, <laughs> you're like, damn it. I can't even yell at you about L- this. Literally, like. I'm going to beat the yeah. out of you. You're so lucky. If you so were down there already, here. I would come down there and get you. Oh, I was so livid. I think I was livid for like, I wasn't even livid about the strip club. It was like simply that I couldn't have like get my words in. Yeah. So I'm like driving like while I found this out. And um, just like in a way where like I was so blacked out that like I really could have crashed my car. I'm driving. I'm like speeding down a block and like I like slow down and I like look up and I see like this light blue balloon like just floating in the middle of the air and I really really wish that like I documented it because I swear you can't make this shit up and I'm looking at it I like slow my car down I'm looking up and I'm like why is there like a random balloon like above me so I like stop the car and I look behind me because his two friends are with me and I'm like you guys see this right they're like yeah so I like I'm like okay so I keep driving and now I'm like a little bit more calm because I'm like I no longer I'm like angry because I'm trying to comprehend this balloon and yeah. I end up going home and I look it up and it says like your significant like your your uh, past loved one is trying to tell you like relax and calm down like they don't like to see you so tense it was like something crazy that like aligned perfectly with yeah. the situation and it really worked and I don't know it's just it's just crazy it's I, an interesting I concept. feel crazy s- explaining it too sometimes yeah. or like we had had, I had had one and I've tried to explain to my siblings, like he is with us every single day, Mm. but I very much believed that immediately. That was maybe my delusion that kicked in immediately where I was like, I'm looking for my dad anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. And I felt like I felt him and I felt like I saw him all the time. And then the more I got very specific with like what I was looking for. And just a couple of weeks ago, I posted the story time. I, my husband and I are looking to move and we have a very specific state in mind. We haven't announced yet, but mm. I spoke out to my dad in the car and I was like, mind you, we live in Minnesota. It's snowy there. Like it's cold there right now. Okay. And I said, dad, like if this is the right move for us, I really want to see a giraffe. I want to make sure that we're not setting ourselves up for failure. A giraffe. I don't know That's where the sign idea, came though. from. I Something li- random. R- very random. Yeah. Very random. And I'd said, I really want to see a draft to make sure that we're like doing the right thing and we're not setting ourselves up for failure moving to this state. Like, I really want to make sure that this is part of our path. Right. Like, we're supposed to take this step, whether we land there forever or it's just the next four years. Who cares? And I said, in any shape or form, I'll look for you this weekend. That was a Saturday morning. That evening, my husband, my best friend and her husband, we all went out and he we all sat down and I look up and our server he wasn't even a server he was a server at the restaurant he came but he we frequent that restaurant he came over to say hi I look up and I literally start bawling I'm like oh my god like I could not control it I physically couldn't control it he had a hat on with a giraffe wow like just a plain giraffe like this it said nothing it was just a big picture of a giraffe and my husband and my best friend are like, is everything okay? And I was like, I just can't explain this. But nobody was in the car with me when I said that out loud. Like, so they're probably like, is everything okay? Right. Like they had no idea. Yeah. And then the next three days in a row, literally that was Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, my husband and I both saw different forms of giraffes each wow. day, once a day while we were together. Wow. And so that was what turned my husband of like, okay, this, there's something to, there's this. something to this. Yeah. And then last weekend we were out in Atlanta um, for filming and I had my mom, my brother, and then my husband. And in the car, I was like, we're going to talk to dad. Like, I'm, you guys are all going to experience this with me. We made it to Atlanta and my dad showed a sign or whatever. So we all got in the car. I was like, okay, like dad's with us. Like, where do we want to see him this weekend? Within 24 hours, all four of our signs that we'd asked for came wow. straight to us. It was, it was so wild. And people I, all the time are like, mm, they're skeptical. I'm like, I don't even care if you don't believe. I, I do. Agree. 
I'm moving now. I'm like happily like, okay. Yeah. I get called delusional all the time. Like go to get help. These right. signs, like there's nothing, blah, blah, blah after this. And it's like, just let me be happy. Yeah. Who Even cares? Like, let's just say worst case scenario. That's, that's the truth. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. What are you worried about? I'm happy go lucky thinking like, you know. Right. But they say that like when you get a sign, like, you know, like you yeah. feel it. And like every single time that I felt like I received the sign, like I really deeply like felt it. I was like, oh, yeah, like you're here, you know, it's so crazy prominent. Did you get any backlash online when it happened? There was like, did you really like when when what happened when the signs passed and like you started sharing about your life? Was there any like backlash to it? I mean, I feel like because we shared before he passed away, we shared the cancer journey just every part of it every stage was always backlash more positive than not so like we focus we try our best to focus on that even though that one comment sticks oh yeah it's so annoying I hate it. i'm like but there's one like in a thousand comments why am i just looking yeah. at this yeah but um yeah there was of course those comments stick you know why are you guys sharing this you want sympathy she just wants attention it's not even her story to tell you know whatever it was it's just on and on and on and then like when i took such a long break and I came back, like, of course, still. Like, oh, yeah. like, it's like, you want me to show up back to the world after something, like, so significant just happened to me? Something so, nothing, like, you could ever understand and just pretend like it didn't happen? Yeah. I don't, I don't even, that's not even who I am anymore. Like, this is who I am. This is just what created the person I am right now, showing yeah. up in front of this camera. Like, it's just unrealistic. And who else is out there that vulnerable? Like, nobody's trying to profit off this. Like, you think I... I say that all the time. There was a comment that had made a, a profit, like I'm profiting off gotcha. my dad. And I was like, well, I would save every penny in the freaking world to bring the man back, but that's not realistic. So yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. I hate that. I hate that part of it. I know. I think that's like one of the worst comments, but I just like, I literally, what I've come to realize is that, you know, your intentions. Yeah. You know why you do what you do. Yeah. You know, when somebody comes up to you in person, they say, Hey, thanks for changing my life. You're like, this is why I do it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, like we're not, what I've learned is like, you can't make everybody happy. And I've honestly tried for so long to do that until like one day you realize like, Oh my God, like every direction that I go, People like want to see this out of me and then I do it. But then this guy's upset. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to win. Yeah. So like, what does Caitlin want? Yeah. And you've stayed close with this family after as well. Very close. Seen. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's so helpful. And they're and supportive of you sharing his story online. They don't want me to stop. I'm like, okay, wait, hold on. I can't just only do this or else I'm going to keep looping in the yeah. same you know, life. You gotta heal too. Right. I have to heal too. And like, even though talking about it is amazing and like, that is the reason why I'm even so sane. There's also a part where it's like, talk about it a healthy amount. So like, you're also talking about like who you are and like what's, you know, forward because sometimes we just like loop in the past a lot. Yeah. So I tell them, I'm like, hold on a second, you know, but I, they're so supportive of everything and having the relationships is like, so I can agree with that where it's like you have to talk about it to heal, but also it can't be the only thing you talk about because at that point it's an unhealthy obsession. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. And you still are friends with his friends. Best friends with them. I love. Those are my guys. I love. And they've taken you in as like a sister. I mean, you guys were all close before, but. Well, honestly, like we were, we were like all cool, but like I would have never expected them to take care of me in the way that they did. Mm. I honestly like, I can't even believe it. Like it's, it's such a beautiful story and i know that like he sat down with each one of like his friends and like and his brother and oh, he gave did. them kind of the rundown of like not only like what he wants them to do for me but like for themselves and how to improve their lives and like what he really wants to see from them but everybody really like took into consideration like what he said and like everybody we've all helped each other like make healthy changes in our mm-hmm. lives so it's it really has just been like such a group effort to get through this i don't think i could have done it alone i don't even know what to say to that that's insane it really is insane. I I just like I would have never ever in my life expected me to get as much help from his friends that I really didn't even know like that in my life. And I thought it was going to be from my friends and they really did help. And they just didn't comprehend the loss like his own boys. Yeah. So to have them to like really like lean on was like not only that, but ugh. for them to follow through too. he really had a solid foundation there he for did. him. He did. And he was really good. And I always used to say to him, like, 
you have the same five guys always around you. Like, don't you want to, like, I love them, but like, you know, you go out there and make more friends. He's like, I just, it's not me. Yeah. Like, I know my people. There's a reason why I have these five. Like, I'm content. I don't need to go out. Whereas me, I love to Meet always people. explore. Yeah. And now I'm a little bit more like, if it comes... Like, I'm not looking for it. If I meet somebody that I'm like, hey, like, next time yeah. you're here, call me. Like, there, yeah. you know, I really value in my life, but I'm not looking for it anymore. Yeah. If it makes sense, great, you know, but if not. Okay, you said he sat down with people. Was there, if you could put in words from him mm -hmm. to people that are listening, what is something from somebody who knows it's coming that he would say to them of, like, how to live life? What's a piece of advice that you could share? just do everything that you can. Cause like, obviously like if he was more mobile, like he would have liked to like hop on a plane and like go travel to certain right. places that he really wanted to go. But for him, because like when you are, when you have cancer, obviously it's like a change of lifestyle and you're trying to eat healthier and like make these changes. But like when it's to a point where like, you know, no matter what you do, you know, it's you're going to yeah. do what you want. Like, yeah. you know, like he was having a free for all, all the candies, you know, pastas, oh, sure. he was Italian. Um, try to really be happy. I know yeah. he kept saying like, um, it's really hard to be happy in this kind of pain. You know, like I'm really, really trying, but like, I think sometimes like the cancer would speak for him. Like he would just get so sassy and he didn't mean to, mm -hmm. but, um, just in pain. He was in so and much anger. Pain. I never seen anything like it before in my life. Honestly, it was. It was horrible. What is something that you would share from your own experience of like, because I can't imagine wa losing someone so young because that's like, I felt my dad was young, but in your 20s, right. like knowing it's coming, has how has it changed you, how you live? Obviously, like doing the best that you can every day, but what's something that you can share with people? Um, honestly, it just reminded me that like, there's so much shit that like we stress about that feels so like it like takes over you mm -hmm. like sometimes for me like engagement online like how many views am I getting like oh the companies want me to send my my analytics over yeah. so they know how much they're gonna pay me for something like a brand deal or something and like I will stress out and then like I bring myself back to center and I'm like you showed up you did the best you could it doesn't matter like yeah. everything else like it doesn't matter like he just showed me that life is it's so cliche it's everywhere so short but like when you really see it you're like wow like in five years like i'm not even gonna be thinking about this yeah. just just like prioritizing like your health and like what makes you happy and being yeah. present try not to stress the future yeah are yeah. every like there's so much parts of our day where like we don't realize it but like we're living in the past like we're thinking about we're stressed about like what we need to do Preach. from last week. Like, Preach. you know, if you really sit down and like find times in your day to really be present, like we don't even realize how much of like program we are, but yeah. like really like sit here right now and talk, like I am talking to you, like I am present. You'd be so much happier. Yeah. This actually, this alone, like learning how to interview with people was something eye opening, right? Because mm -hmm. so much of your life, you're always taught to like, you want to respond. That's the first thing. True. And the first book I sat down was like, I was like, I want to just enjoy it. I don't yeah. want to like be. And the thing was, shut up and listen. That was what it was. Don't come in with 10 questions you have to ask. Just let it happen. Right. Just talk, be present, listen to their answer and like go from there. And ever since I digested that, it changed my life yeah. because you're, you do listen to just listen. Right. Or sometimes I'll be like, I have nothing to say back to that. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. Like that's crazy. And I believe that where we're always constantly stressed or worried about the past or the future. And it's just like, it could be gone like that. Mm -hmm. It's craziness. Yeah. Cause we spent like so much time, like hoping, you know, using our energy to like research, like maybe last minute ways to like cure to cancer. <sighs> and like, if I didn't spend so much time, like, you know, doing that, I could have been a little bit more present because yeah. he kept saying like, guys, stop, please. Yeah. Like, just, can we just all accept this? He just wanted to have time. You know? With you guys. Yeah. He's like, please just be here. And we were like, but no, but no. And like, you know, the, the two days before that where it was like, okay, I surrender. Like I was like, damn, like I really wish I did this more. And then I thought to myself, I'm like, do I ever even do this in my life? Mm -hmm. Like I am like as present as it gets when you're sitting in front of somebody that, you know, you're never going to see again. 
it's like a presence like you've never experienced in your life and it's like or even if you know you're gonna see him again who exactly cares? it's like you why do we know. wait you know yeah. why did i never feel this before so my body is like tingling thank you for sharing that seriously that's a whole new perspective of like we know it but to articulate that is we always say like live for today because tomorrow yeah. will never come but it's like when you experience that or especially someone so young that's crazy mm-hmm. I, I, I all i can say is crazy like there's no right there's better no word. words yeah. i even say i'm like i have nothing to say everybody's like how did you do it i'm like i don't know i, I want to talk about that so we were talking before mm-hmm. we started filming and like figuring out how to articulate feelings that like we've never even felt before like yeah you're powerful online as well of like sharing those things. And I know that that's something I actually pride myself in too, of like really sitting and digesting. Like, how do I feel? How can I put this into words? And so many people will like comment or DM and they're like, thank you for putting my feelings into words because Mm. I could never articulate it. Yeah. Are you kind of like that too, where you sit on it and you're like, I just need to like unjumble the mess. Yes, definitely. Like even the other day, cause I'm trying to like take these next steps in my life and move forward and try to like date again. And, um, there was a guy that asked me if I wanted to do something for Valentine's day. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, I hate Valentine's day. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, why, why do I hate Valentine's day? Yeah. Like, what, what is it about it? And I sat down and I, after really thinking about it, I'm like, well, I had a really bad experience my last Valentine's day when Francesco was here because he was very sick and we couldn't really go out to dinner or do anything. And it wasn't that I hated that day or Valentine's day. I hated cancer. Mm-hmm. So to this day, I always thought like, oh, you hate Valentine's Day. And then I realized like I'm I'm projecting the cancer onto Valentine's Day. I don't hate Valentine's yeah. Day. So I try really hard to like understand things. and Get to the root of it. Yeah. And understanding yourself is so powerful. Like yeah. if you understand you and who you are and why you do things, like no one else can tell you who you are, what yeah. you do and why. So. I'm so happy. I'm like... <laughs> I just want to sit in your chair with you. Come over here. Tell me everything. (laughs) She walked in. I was like, tell me everything. (laughs) Yeah. I say that to everybody because I'm like, oh, your story is just. Okay. So you said you're back in the dating world. I have seen that online too. Mm -hmm. That's probably a new. That's new. (sighs) It's still new. How do you feel with it? Is it like scary? I feel like I'd be scared. Yeah. It's a little scary because I feel like. Do you feel like you're like cheating on him? Or like Um, guilty, like I wanted to make sure that I didn't do the whole dating thing until I didn't see it that way. Okay. So like I made sure. Sorry, I know that was like. No, no, no. Are you cheating on him? It's a great question because I was like, when someone passes away, like it's no, you're not agreeing to break up, so it feels like you're still with them. Yeah, like guilty. Yeah, so it's like it takes a long time to digest that, and that's why I really did wait as long as like I knew I needed to, but um. It's kind of hard, you know, because there's a lot of other people that haven't been through this Mm -hmm. at my age, you know, with like significant others. So finding somebody that like is on the same, like, I don't want to sit on a date and talk about what's your favorite color. Like, I'm such a deep person at this point in my life. And like, I need to like go on a date and like be able to like talk about things as well. It's just hard to find that. Yeah. So surface level I feel level like you've sometimes. been maneuvering it well. Or I remember seeing, um, was it Train Guy? Train Guy. And everyone yeah. was like, date him. And you're like, no, like, I'm not going to get married tomorrow. Oh. Like, I'm out here to experience life. Yeah. I thought that was also powerful, too. Because especially, no loss, a, a loss all aside, at this age, you feel like I should be married. Or like, right. I'm going to, whoever's like the first, next best, like, let's yeah. do it. And I think it's powerful for you to share the message again, loss aside of like, still do what's best for you. Yeah. Test the waters, make sure you know what you're getting. And yeah. especially because you guys were together for so long. Well, that's what I was trying to explain to everybody. I'm like, mm-hmm. I only know him. So yeah. if I go and date Trey man right now, I'm going to just keep looking for him and, hit, yeah. and him. And it's like, it's very important for me to use this time to like date different types of people and like understand what it is that I'm really looking for. And there's going to be parts of Francesco that I learned that I love, like a family man that I, I'm going to carry, but like, I cannot look for Francesco. Nobody will ever be Francesco. So just trying not to like project the trauma onto anybody. Yeah. It's a challenge. I think you're doing great though. Especially even just acknowledging that is huge. Seriously. I know. I really, I sometimes like, there's so many people that like, I've like, my friends are like, this sounds so messed up, but like, low-key like thank god this happened to you because like you were like if anything like there's anybody that can like really like sit with themselves and like do their best to like navigate it it's you like we would have been like we don't even know where we would have been so i really really try to like think everything through 
for myself but like i also like really want to like help people like navigate yeah. this so i'm like okay if i can understand this i could teach this yeah so it's like a that's, passion that's a lot of what i went through too of like when when he first passed someone had said to me like everything happens for a reason and i literally want to be like you're so lucky i don't want to punch you in your face right now like who says that <laughs> right, right but now so far removed i feel as if so much in my life is because he's up there guiding it mm -hmm. one and two it's because we are able to sit in our thoughts and articulate and look back and be like, okay, we are meant to be here. Let's not let this consume us. Yeah. Let's learn from it and teach others how they can. Cause so many people lose themselves after death. It's, it's like true. their life is over just as much. It's like yep. two people died Yep. because it just consumes them uh, yeah. for I the mean, rest like of their life. You died. Yeah. I like how you said like, when somebody comes up to you and says like everything happens for a reason. I feel like people say things to people that are grieving that yeah. they think is helpful but it's like not like yeah. one thing that like I would always get is um, what was it? Um, I can't imagine being you and like <laughs> same. I'm out of body right now, <laughs> actually, <laughs> literally. And it's like it makes sense. It's like, you know, yeah. like even like I almost like wanted to say like I can't imagine losing my dad. And it's like, I don't know. I know like they don't mean it. And like it just makes you feel alone without realizing like yeah. I didn't realize because I kept hearing it so much like I. I'm so proud of you. I just can't imagine. I can't imagine. It's like, I understand. I get it. Yeah. Nobody can imagine being me. So if, I even say it too, though, you know, to other people. Really? Like, I do. Or like when people are like, one thing I didn't like is like, you're so strong. And it's like, this mm. wasn't a strength that like, it just can't like, I don't know. It, yeah. What was I going to do? Like, yeah. my only option is to wake up and breathe. Like, right. I didn't have an option. Right. The only option is to just keep going. Yeah. Um, I feel like everybody has, like, their things. Yeah. That's why so many people are so gentle with people yeah. that are grieving, which is, like, a really uncomfortable feeling. Looking back now, there was, oh, my gosh, there was this one lady at, um, I think it was my brother who's standing next to me. And she was like, my husband died from a heart attack. And I'm sitting here like, we're at his wake. Like, be so real right now. Like, mm. I, I'm sorry. I don't mm. have an ounce to give oh, to yeah. feel your pain right now. Like it just felt very uncomfortable, but I knew she meant well of like trying to be relatability or right, like, right. I get that a lot too. Or, and it, that's fine. But now looking back, I'm like, what do you say? I know. Because again, like even me and my siblings, same person, same relationship, totally different loss, yeah. totally different grief, totally different relationship too. You know? Yep. Um, I think that people are scared to like tell yeah. the person that like, Hey, I don't know how to show up for you. Yeah. And I think the most beautiful thing in the world is say, going to that person and saying, tell me what you need Yeah. because I don't know what you need. And like, I want to help, but I don't know how. Mm -hmm. And like, let the person tell you. I you had know? a whole episode on that of like how to show up for a mm, griever. Love that. Because I was like something that was a lot of people ask, like, how did your husband help you? Like, how, because I, for, Ooh, I know that. for like a year or two, it, literally just a couple of months ago, I had asked him of like, how are you? Because I never really even stopped to process mm. that like my husband just lost somebody mm -hmm. and or like my cousins. Like I remember and my dad was like, very, everybody loved him. You could I always say this. You could not hate him. Like right. no one could hate Bill. Bill, and I love it. yeah, <laughs> just a little guy. <laughs> But my cousins were like constantly there for us and months had passed and I could tell something was off with one of my girl cousins. I was like, is like, are you okay? And I just realized I never asked her like, are you okay? Hmm. But now flop rolls. And if it were my uncle, but her father, I would be devastated right? because I, I kind of explained it as like, you have the first wave of grief and that's mm. like, that's like the core family, the spouse, the parents, the siblings, like that's, that's step one. Like, and I mean spouses and like the re the significant others like that's like who you're there with every single day. Right. And then it's like everyone else kind of takes a back burner. The cousins, the right. aunts, the uncles. Those are the ones that kind of try and fill. And I just said to people like just show up and sit with me. Like there were some times where a girlfriend would just come over. She would sit on the couch and out of nowhere like I would go to the bathroom. She was doing a load of laundry. And I just never even really realized it. But she was just like try she just didn't know what to do. Right, right. So she was just present. And then That's all you can ask yeah. for sometimes. Yeah. Or like the food delivery getting dropped off was mm. so like granted we didn't have that, but when I see that online, I'm like Oof. I had so much Did food. you? Oh my god. Okay. Every day, like edible arrangements or you know We had a lot of flowers. Flowers. Oh, mm -hmm. I know. Honestly, it's funny you say like when you just said flowers, like I'm realizing right now, like I'm ha I'm see I'm doing it like I don't like flowers because of that. And I'm like, really? okay, Oh, like, yeah, because they like, associate. Yep. 
when I think flowers, I just think of like the whole funeral and like how we decorated it and like the amount of flowers that came to my house and like the smell of them. Like I'm just thinking about the smell as like a triggering smell because it's like that was sent to me for this loss that like I, I dreaded that part of my life. Yeah. So I was a little opposite because my dad, um, I grew up away from my dad and I would randomly like get a flower delivery. And then when I moved to Minnesota and I was close to him, he would show up on Valentine's Day, no matter where I was working with a thing of flowers or at my apartment in my eyes, they were from him. And I know that was kind of like how I thought of it. It was like maybe even from Francesco's Mm, point of view, too, of like. I want to like shower her with flowers or like, and that was kind of where my mindset went. And I still love flowers to this day because I'm like, see, I love talking about this stuff. It's mm -hmm. so nice to hear a different perspective. perspective, Yeah. And that's why I get so upset when like people think it's like shamed upon to talk about because I'm like, even this right now is helping me. Yeah. And it's like to give these perspectives and like put them there for people to listen to. And if they agree, great. If they don't, at least they can hear how other people are healing. (laughs) Yeah. Like we're healing, you know? It's yeah. like so upsetting now. Like, it, I don't know if you you kind of like said briefly you dealt with it. It's like, why are these things being spoken about online? It's like, why is it so taboo? Yeah. I really do believe that there are certain people here that go through and that goes back into like everything happens for yes. a reason. Yep. I really believe that did happen to us because we are a voice here yep. and we are meant to be speaking about it. Yep. I mean, look how many ki- like siblings I have that don't talk about it. You yeah. know, there's a reason that my life was online. Yep. And I went through that and my dad was present on my social media, stuff like that. I've like, I don't know. I just felt like, oh, so for example, like say my brother Aaron who w- blew up online but hated talking about it. There's a reason that like he didn't blow up online and I was. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, like yep. there's a reason that we got a voice or like there's a reason Justin Bieber picked you and yeah. you just didn't know it until the bigger picture. Yeah, and it's true. to use your power and change lives whether it's one or a million who cares yeah no it's true i mean even like what are on and off francesco had like another girlfriend for like a little bit like a couple months and i was (laughs) not happy i was freaking out because i he's never like dated anyone else but me at the time so i was like wow like this is a serious breakup this time and i hated like the whole thing her him at the time like the whole whatever and like um before he passed away like we were like talking about that relationship and he was just like you know I'm so happy that I had that experience because like it was really you all along and like Mm -hmm. if I didn't date that other person like how would I know for sure and like yeah what we realize is like everything is so just like embrace everything that happens to you because it all is going to make sense in the end yeah I always say that the bigger like when you're going through hardship you look around you're like what is the bigger picture to this like why and then when you get there like Hmm. I just had to trust and I say that all the time now like I used to be a control freak with hardships Mm. if I couldn't control it I would spaz gotcha and now I'm like okay like I'm excited to see what the lesson is here I'm excited to get past this and figure out what this means granted it's still hard like I'm not perfect and like I still have the emotions yeah but I'm like I look back now and I'm like okay like there's something coming. We just got to wait it out. Like God's up there. He's got us. Dad's up there. He's got us. Like we can't fail. So let's just learn from it and keep going. But it's so hard hard. to surrender to that. Oh, it's so hard. I'm like, I need to fight this. Like I want to know why now, but it's not going to show itself. Especially because we're in the generation of like, everything's literally at our fingertips. So (sighs) it's like, if I can't Google it, (laughs) I don't understand it. Yeah. We're so impatient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's true. Social media has made everything so convenient. Yeah. I do believe your your person is out there, and I feel like he will handpick him for you. A hundred percent. Do you feel like that? Said. Yeah. Oh, I know it. Yeah. I know it. So I feel like when I meet him, I'll know. Mm-hmm. But I just hope that it's not for a little bit because I really want to, like, embrace just being me and, like, yeah. figuring out who I am. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm still on that journey. Yeah. And it's hard to, like do it with like somebody that like you just met i feel like for you like you could still explore you because now you're like very settled but like Mm -hmm. someone like me who needs to like spend a lot of time getting to know that person you kind of like neglect yourself a little bit so i'm like okay wait not right now yeah yeah we my husband and i like i told you we met previously but i had a i had a tie and we talk a lot about now of like we got engaged and married within eight months of our engagement and we used to argue like not even argue. We were both like, is this too fast? But the venue we wanted, mm. the weekend it was, like, it was just, it felt so aligned. So you had like a real wedding the whole night. Yeah, the whole wow. thing. Wow. But both of us, so we had like, 
we were living in my dad's basement, which mind you, both of us were like, we didn't want to do that, but COVID happened. We were, we got out of our apartments. We moved into the basement. We were both like embarrassed by that. We lived there for a year and it was so much fun. I still to this day say that was like my favorite year of my entire life because it was my whole household of some of my core favorite people Mm. and I wasn't raised with them. So it was like I was getting to know them too at the same time. And you got all that time with him too. Yeah, and my husband too. So it was like he got to know that and we look back of like, We were barely making ends meet. It was so hard planning a wedding, buying a house, renovating, and we were stressed. And and then literally not even five months later, my dad had passed. Mm. So it was like, we look back now and I say all the time, I thank God we got married that weekend. I thank God my dad was there. there. And I'm the only girl. Like he got to walk me down the aisle. Amazing. So happy to hear that. And again, looking back, I'm like, Raphael and I used to be so stressed and now we're like, Thank you, God. Yep. Thank you, God, that that happened that way. And that was meant to be that way. And then two weeks later, we took him on a road trip to freaking Colorado. We had 13 hours in the car with the man. And yeah. he just decided to tag along because he was free. And we were like, okay, come. But like, there were so many things that happened that we didn't even want to go to that wedding. And yeah. we were like, okay, we're going to go because they came to ours. So we like made it happen. And it was just all the stars aligned. And the time was yeah. for a reason. And I really believe that for you guys too. Of like, oh, Thank you. You guys were meant to have the time and have that bond and he'll send somebody great Yeah, when I the time is right. So. Do you believe in like uh, dark humor around grief? Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you make jokes. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. Do yeah. you? Sometimes it's just easier that way. Yeah. I'm like, you bastard, you left. <laughs> you said <laughs> bye. You bastard. You said bye, but like, could you give me like a couple minutes heads up? You just knocked yeah. down like, all right, thanks. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I try and then I'm like, oh, like this sounds like insane. But then, yeah. like, I see other people, like, do, like, funny videos about, like, there was this girl on TikTok and, like, she lost her best friend to, like, a drunk driver. Oof. And, like, she, like, went, like, shopping and, like, oh, she, uh, the best friend that, like, when she passed in the car was wearing her clothes. And she's like, you took my shirt with me? Ah. Like, and I was like, you know, like, there was some of the comments were like, this is, like, scary, disgusting. And, like, yeah. there's some comments that, like, you know, like, hey, like, this is how she's handling yeah. it. Me, I was like, oh, it's nice to see, like, somebody can, like. It's so sad. Sometimes it's nice to like find like moments yeah. to just smile. I don't know. I mean, sometimes it just fills it too. Or yeah. like, I feel like a lot of times you have to be the one to make like the icebreaker right. comment. Like, for example, I was in the Bahamas with some girlfriends and do you, you know, Ali and Isaac Rochelle, Mm-mm. they, they're content creators as well. And Ali had found out she was pregnant mm. and I made a TikTok and we were joking and she was I was like what did it what was it like telling your dad like that you like do it ah. and at the very <laughs> end of it it was like I, I just won't get to relate to that like yes, I will never gotcha. have to tell him that and like the video once she announced I posted it and it went viral and people were like this is such dark humor but I'm like it's funny though like because yeah. it's such an awkward like we're talking about your dad like you guys just kind of fun like you got to fill the space every once in a while yeah. like i'm okay you guys like it's right we i'm still a human being like i yeah. can joke it's okay yeah sometimes like my brother aaron and i will be like fuck you bill like when he's around <laughs> like we used to call him bill when he was like i don't know we just always called him by his first name love that and like personally we would call him dad but like when he was doing something right. stupid we would be like shut up bill like <laughs> but like yeah. when something goes wrong I'm like fuck you bill like come on i man. love hitting with the, the parents with their first name yeah I just feel like a boss. Oh, yeah. My mom's name is Allison. I'm like, Allison, take it easy right now. Not Allison. She's like, all right. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I love the first names. I don't know why. Yeah. No, they, they do something basis. for us. I don't yeah. know what it is. Okay. So we talked a lot about grief. Is there anything else? I know like you have a whole storyline. Is there anything that you want to share? We can always get back on another time. I'm always okay. in New York. <laughs> oh, period. Yeah. Um, we'll be back in two weeks. <laughs> that I would want to share is, um, hmm. I would say like if somebody's out there listening, say, for example, you're on the other end of this and what is something that you would want to hear and you want to leave people with? Um, I guess I would say that like when you're if you've ever been through a dark time and if you ever go through a really dark time and it feels like your life is over, like it's not. Yeah. It's going to be OK. I feel yeah. like that's what I would really want to be reminded of after listening to something like this because it's like all fun and games and so like light to talk about sometimes like as you continue to heal and time passes but like during that time that this was happening like this was real life it's really so happening. heavy it was horrific it was horrible throw up worst thing ever and like to know two years later like i can sit back reflect and like i can talk about this and be like okay yeah i just want to remind people that like it'll be okay 
yeah. one day. If you were to go back to her, like you two mm-hmm. years ago, what is something that you would like sit with her and say to like, because saying that mm-hmm. is so easy to say, but it's like, how did you, how would you pull yourself out of that if you could go back? I would probably just tell myself that like you're doing everything you can because like you feel like you could be maybe doing more. Maybe you're doing things wrong. You know, like you kind of feel guilty that like you can't like help this cancer along. I would just tell myself like just go easy. You know, like give yourself grace and time to like just be. We're called human beings. We're supposed to just be. We're not supposed to always do. You know, like just sit sit down and relax. I feel like I would tell myself I just was never relaxed. Do you Ever. have any regrets if you could look back and like, th- again, tell somebody to not do that because you regret doing that? I always talk about like in terms of relationships because like I lost a significant other. Like yeah. pick and choose what you're fighting about. You know, like we've spent so much time like fighting over stupidity, you yeah. know, whether it was like down to like what restaurant we wanted to eat at and like becomes like a whole thing. Like I would say like sometimes it's not always worth like that whole song and dance like sometimes things are very simple as like a conversation and you move on also like really understanding like love languages and like Mm -hmm. understanding your person like deeply because like his love language is much different than mine like I come from a family that's not very into like physical touch and like he was a physical like he when he loved me like he wanted to embrace me like you know that was his thing and I was like oh like I'm not a big like lovey guy and like for him he's like well then do you not love me as much as I love you I'm like no and I showed it a different way so just really like understanding like there's so many different people to walk this earth. We all show ourselves in different ways and like holding space for that. Like not yeah. everybody's like you. Yeah. You know, you only know you. So you assume when yeah. you're younger, like everyone's okay, you. everybody's like me. Yeah. But it's like, I will say also on the flip to tell you, like, give yourself that grace of like, you guys argue because you guys were young. Like, that's okay. I and that's know. so normal. I, I think those are fun things to look back about. Like, mm-hmm. what'd you guys fight about? Where to eat? Yeah, I do it too with my husband still to this day. Like really? that's so normal. That's I not know. something you that's should be true. like, damn, I regret that. Like he didn't go to the grave, like hating those arguments. If anything, true. it just if was anything, like, that was like our la- like when he passed and like I wrote his speech for his funeral and I was like trying to like bring light to it. Like I've come to realize that like all the jokes that I made, like in the speech was like our fights. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, like they felt so serious in that moment. But now like, this is like the highlight of yeah. like my like yeah. speech, you know, it made you guys you exactly. I always say, and I was just talking about this last night of like, I think that the arguments are the most, the best part of a relationship mm. because normally when you're arguing, it's something you're passionate about. It's not because you're just like p- pissed at the world and you just like want to shit right. on him. You're like, no, like I'm passionate about this. Granted, like the, the food, not necessarily, but <laughs> arguments are always so like when my husband is so passionate about something or like so angry, I'm like, okay, I need to sit down and listen because he's genuinely cares right. about this, right. which means that like, I'm going to put my feelings aside. Cause I really don't care. I'm just saying no, mm. just to say no, or because it doesn't make sense in my mm. head. So like, let me just sit down and be like, okay, why are you so passionate about this? Like, why is really it making listen. you so reactive and vice versa? So I love arguments in couples. Cause mm. I'm always like, that's so healthy. You're yeah. figuring out like you're learning. Yeah. yeah. Or like what, what is getting you so up? set right now about this like I need to hear your side and that's that's my favorite part of like that's the time you sit down and shut up and you're like Mm. I just want to hear it yeah like tell me what like tell me what's going on when he's just like sunshine and rainbows I'm like I'm just doing whatever I want to do like I'm not learning anything about him or like what's sparking the fire to his soul so I love those I don't feel like you should look back and be like I regret those or anything you guys had honestly that's that's a really good point Uh, after that then like I would say nothing honestly like I feel like I try to like look back and be like, you know what? Like you really did do everything you can. And like you were there. That's all that matters. Like you were there. Yeah. You know? So I love it. I love having you on. I love it. I love it. I kept saying, I was like, we're gonna one day. I was like, one day having her on. Perfect. Yeah. Not even that, but I was like, one day I'm gonna like finally get to talk to you. Like, cause I kept seeing you in rooms and I was like, it's just so busy. And like, it is very busy. And it's just, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes I'm like, Again, I don't want to, like, go up to people and be like, hey, let's talk about something deep right, right. now. I'm like, nice to see you. Bye. That's crazy you were there last night, though. Like, if you were like, hey, I'm going to see you tomorrow, I would have been like, wait, what? Yeah, I was, I, I was like, going to. Um, you were talking to somebody, though, and we were trying to leave. We had a dinner reservation, so I was like, I'll just see her tomorrow. But I know. Also, like, those events, like, small talk is so draining. <laughs> so, honestly, that's why like, I'm in it's, and out. it's better off because, like, I'm already, like, small talk and everybody and their mother in there, and I'm like, yeah. 
No, yeah. I <laughs> honestly just wanted to do like a quick like face to the name. So it was like, hey, like. Right. That would have been nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less creepy. Um, <laughs> seriously. Well, you brought me to your crib. This is I your know. New York crib. So. I know. Come to my apartment. <laughs> sit down and tell me all your deepest, darkest it's secrets. Really nice. Let's go. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Shout out again. to Energy House. Yeah, but, for having me. Well, thank you for being here. I'm excited. Let us know if you're ever in town in Minneapolis. Oh, my God. Literally. I Where? know I have a friend there. I would have never Do you thought. Really? You. Oh, I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, no one ever knows about Minneapolis. Where can people <laughs> find you? You're Caitlin Reagan on both socials, right? Instagram. Yep. Caitlin underscore Reagan. Okay. And TikTok. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else? Do you do? No, you just, just do those two? My podcast that I'm bringing okay. back. Um, you should. Let's talk. Yeah, I know. I, I miss honestly like this is making me miss it so yeah. much like just having a conversation and chilling yeah. like there's so much to get from like people's conversations so. yeah well you can find her online let us know if you guys loved hearing about this I do want to say if you've lost somebody obviously you know that like that hole is massive but I know she hates this I can't imagine losing a spouse I can't imagine losing a partner it's you guys are in a whole journey so mm-hmm. have yourself some give yourself grace Yes. We're here with you. Yes, we are. You're not alone. And we will see you next week. Goodbye. Thanks. Um.